Hey everyone, I got back from the range a little bit ago, and I wanted to show the Timberwolf Compact uh, frame and the Suarez V5 slide. Um, I really do like the slide. I don't know if I'm going to do a full video on that. Um, it's the same kind of awesome quality that I see in the V3 slide. Um, pretty happy with it overall. Using ETS 10 round magazines, these guys work really well, especially, um, or even with, rather, the... Um, Magwell uh, standard Glock mags, standard Glock rather 10 round magazines. I got one here. Do not work with the Magwell. You just can't get them to see. But the ETS, get this out of the way. The ETS um, will see with a bit of effort. So that's kind of cool. Um, S3F Solutions barrel, uh, stainless steel guide rod. You can actually see on the barrel. There is a little bit of wear. This has only had, um, let me think about 100 rounds through it today. It was actually like 80 rounds through it today. Um, I was having ejection issues with the gun, and I'm pretty sure that was the ejector, or sorry, the extractor itself, um, not holding on to the round fully. Let me find my snap cap. I dropped my snap cap. Anyway. I'm not going to worry about that right now. What would happen is the round, the brass, the empty brass, as it's being ejected, rather extracted out of the chamber. Sorry about the lack of light, by the way. But the empty brass is being extracted from the chamber before it gets to the ejector. There you go. You can see it. Before it gets to the ejector in here, um, it actually releases and is just flopping around inside the case. So it doesn't get pushed out um, of here. The extractor kind of just lets go of it as it's back in its travel then the, the next round that's trying to feed into this pushes the empty case and it gets caught usually on the hood of the barrel um, and that just kind of locks everything up or the empty case is trying to feed back into the chamber and it just locks everything up in about here um, I got the phenomena um, caught on camera a couple of times uh, I didn't actually have my camera focused on the gun the camera was kind of further down, but whenever it did happen, it would look something like this, and then I would go down and um, kind of show that to the camera. I've got like five or six instances um, on film that I'll roll in in a little bit toward the end of the video. Um, nice Ameriglow sights on here. Um, I got sights with a big orange front, uh, but until I can get the extraction fixed, um, I had almost a failure per 10 rounds. So that's way too much uh, for this. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not the frame, pretty sure it's not the slide, pretty sure it's not the barrel. Um, the chamber on the barrel is still actually very smooth. So I don't think it's getting caught up there. Because um, it'd be rough and kind of holding onto the case. I think it's actually the ejector, or sorry, the extractor itself. Um, this is a lone wolf extractor. Um, the whole upper parts kit is lone wolf except for the barrel and the recoil um, and the guide rod. And recoil spring but this um, extractor I have had issues with lone wolf extractors in the past don't know what it is that they're doing um, but the geometry on here just doesn't seem to line up so I'm gonna change this with the Glock stock extractor thankfully I have one to borrow this is my USA um, Glock 19c so I'll take this extractor and put it right here and just see what happens um, I'll take this back to the range at some point, probably not in the next uh, week or so. But when I finally do get it, um, I hope it works reliably, because I really do like this gun. I like the ergonomics on it, um, and I look forward to holding on to it for a while. Uh, but anyway, um, I'll roll in some footage on here, and hope you guys um, get some information out of this, and I hope to have another update on this soon. Thank you.